Today I'm gonna to share with you three co-pilot tips, one in chat, one in Excel, and one in Outlook to help you become a Microsoft 365 co-pilot expert. My name is Shervin Shafi and I'm a co-pilot principal engineer at Microsoft. Welcome to Collaboration Simplified. <laughs> Just a quick thank you to all the channel members. I really, really appreciate your support. So the first tip is in Microsoft 365 Copilot chat. And so right now you're seeing the application that I have up, which basically in your Windows desktop, you can see this M365 Copilot app. Now, if you don't have the app, you can also go to your favorite web browser and just type in M365. 65copilot.com and that'll ask you to log in and it'll give you the same interface as the application. So there's different ways of accessing it. What I wanted to show you is that on the top right hand side you have these three dots. When you click that you can go to settings. Now here under personalization this is something that a lot of people haven't spent time to configure. There are two sections here. There's one on custom instructions that you can give Copilot, and then there's also Copilot memory. Now, I want to focus on this custom instructions. Basically, if you select that, you'll see that it says here, look, feel free to include details about your interests, preferences, goals, or any other specific context that you would like Copilot to deliver. So, you basically have to fill this section out and then you have to turn on this toggle so that it's active. Now I'm going to do an experiment before my custom instructions and after and we'll see what the difference is. So here if I type in a prompt like tell me more about what GPT-5 benefits are in Copilot. So here it's telling me what GPT-5 brings to Copilot. GPT-5 is OpenAI's most advanced generative AI. All this kind of good stuff, right? Now here's the experiment. If we go back to settings and we go to custom instructions and I say, look, every time you respond, do so as a cheery poem. Very simple instruction. You can give it a lot of different instructions. You can tell it to be concise, be very detailed, explain it at, as a fifth grader, whatever you want it to do, instead of having to say it every single time, this is where you can kind of set those custom instructions so that it follows it for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this toggle on. Don't forget to do that and click save. Now with that, let's X out of here and start a new chat. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna go ahead and click new, new chat and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in. Now let's see what it does. All right, so here it is. It says, oh, Shervin, gather around, let's take a ride through GPT-5's Copilot stride with insights fresh and features grand. Here's what's new across the land. So you can see that it basically took my instructions and now from this point on, every time it's gonna to respond to me, it's gonna do it in a cheery poem fashion. Again, you can change these custom instructions to anything that you want. You can always go ahead and go back into settings and type it in. Again, just don't forget to put in, slide this over so that it's actually using the custom instructions. So that's tip number one. So the next Copilot tip is in Excel. So we're gonna fire up Excel and then we're gonna select, uh, create a new blank workbook over here. And once that fires up, I wanted to show you this new Copilot function that exists inside Excel. So go ahead and go to any cell inside Excel. And I'm gonna type in equals to bring up the different functions. And I'm gonna start typing in Copilot. You'll see that now this FX Copilot comes up, this new Copilot function. And now to use it, I'm gonna provide an example here. So let's say I'm gonna put in this parentheses sign and then put quotations and say, list all the ingredients for this food, close the quotation mark, and then put a comma and say 
that I want the food item to be in uh, cell H2 and then close the parentheses and then hit enter. So basically anytime now you go to H2 and you give it a food like a burger for example it'll give you the ingredients that it believes are necessary to create a burger. So you can see here we have bun, beef patty, lettuce, tomato, all that kind of stuff. Now if I change H2 to chicken soup, it'll change the ingredients to what it thinks you need to have to be able to make chicken soup. But basically we put in this copilot function here as listing all the ingredients and it references H2, but you can change this to whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be listing the ingredients for a food item. That was just an example. Let's say we switch this up to list all the major cities in this country. And then we we'll switch the country to China, for example. And then here it's giving us all the major cities inside China. Or if we switch it up to France, then it'll give us all the major cities inside France. So very, very cool new addition to Microsoft Excel. Now the final tip that I have for you is inside Outlook. And so what we're gonna do is basically just open up Outlook. And once that's open, we have to go to the settings, which in this case, it's on the top right hand side right here, this wheel icon and we're gonna select settings. And then notice that on the bottom left hand side, there's a co-pilot menu item. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. Now with that selected, there are three different items here. There's preferences, prioritize, and draft instructions. These are all very good options to tweak for yourself, but I'm gonna focus on prioritize because I think this is a really cool feature. So here basically you can say, look, let Copilot prioritize my email. So you gotta switch this toggle on. And you can also select AI generated summaries and apply a low priority label if you wanted to. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into this customize section. And in this section, we have two different items. We have higher priority and lower priority. So with higher priority selected, you can give it some instructions of what you would consider to be high priority emails based on projects, based on who's sending it, you know. So again, similar to rules, but using natural language and I think a lot more powerful. So here, very simply, I'm gonna say, look, anytime I get an email from Maud, uh, any emails from Maud, these are high priority. So I'm gonna select add. And so now it says any emails from Maud. And then lower priorities, uh, any emails from Albert. Okay, anyone named Albert. So very simple example, you can see any emails from Albert, any emails from Maud for higher and lower. And again, you can customize it not just by people's names, but also by project names or uh, different events. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and click save. I'm gonna X out of here. Now here as a test, you'll see that there's these two different emails sent, one by Albert and one by Maud. And if you recall, Maud is high priority, which is what this arrow is, and Albert is actually low priority. Now when we select the one by Maud, it'll say right here, high priority. And if we select Albert, it'll actually say low priority. It's based on the way we've defined it. And by the way, if you like these arrows, like the one for the up arrow, we actually can go back to settings and uh, go, go to Copilot and prioritize. And there is a section here that says apply low priority label, which we didn't have selected. So if we select that and click save, now even for the low priority item, the Albert Einstein, you'll see that the arrow got added. So there's the down arrow, there's the up arrow based on the co-pilot prioritization that we selected. One other thing I'll just show you real quick is that you can sort by using this up and down arrow here. So we've sorted by date, but we can sort by priority. So if we sort by priority, now the higher priority items show up first and the lower priorities will be below. And it even says high priority 
low priority for you over here and over here. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Drop your questions in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one.